Here we have a new kinematics problem. Uh, a, this is a very common one. It says a jogger traveling with constant velocity, 2.2 meters per second, passes a stationary cyclist. At the moment when the jogger passes the cyclist, the cyclist starts to pedal and accelerates at a constant 0.6 meters per second squared. How long will it take in seconds for the cyclist to catch up to the jogger? Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out the solution to this problem. So, <clears throat> what we need to recognize here is that we have two different motions. So, for the jogger, their position, and by the way, this is something I should actually clear before I continue, and that is, some students think that the cyclist will catch the jogger when they are both traveling at the same speed. This is not true. If, if the cyclist gets to the same speed as the jogger, since the jogger had a head start, essentially because the cyclist starts from zero velocity, even though the cyclist is accelerating, at that point, the jogger will be ahead of the cyclist. In order for the cyclist to catch up to the jogger, they need to actually tra go at a higher velocity to catch up to the jogger. So the answer to this problem really is not when will the two travelers have the same velocity, but rather when will they have the same position. So if I draw the position graph, the DT graph, of the jogger, it looks like this. Well, let me see if I can do that again. It's a, it's a straight line. Whereas the cyclist, the DT graph for that guy, is gonna, it's gonna start from zero, but it's going to be a curve that has an acceleration. So if I if I superimpose these two position time graphs I get this. And you see it is at this point here that their locations will be the same. The question is, what time is that? And in order to figure that out, we need to write down the two equations for both lines. Now in this case, um, the equation for the constant velocity for this guy, d f is equal to v t plus di and in this case di is zero okay because that's zero and for this one we have uh, df equals one half a t squared plus v i t plus di now in this case di is also zero, and not only is di zero, but also vi, the initial velocity, is also zero. So both of these terms can be ignored. Now we can set df of the jogger equal to df of the cyclist. And when we do that, we'll get Vt equals one half a t squared. And we're looking for time here. We want to find out what this time is. 
So in order to solve for time in this equation, we'll divide both sides by t, and we'll end up with v equaling 1 half at. The square will disappear. And then we can isolate the t variable by simply multiplying both sides by 2 and dividing by a. So I'll get 2v divided by a equals t. Now I can go ahead and plug my values in. I'll get 2 times <coughs> the jogger was going 2.2 divided by a of the cyclist, which is 0 0.6. And I'll end up with 7.3 actually repeating seconds. Now, just out of curiosity, so this is the amount of time required, and that's the answer, but what position is that at? So we can use either equation now to get the position. Let's use VT of the jogger. So that's 2.2 .2 times 7.3. And also, the final position of the, that's the jogger, and the cyclist, let me move this up a bit, and the cyclist is going to be 1 half A uh, T squared. And in both cases, we're going to get, six, they're both 16.1 meters. So we know our answer is correct. And so now, if we come over here, we can say, haha, that is 16.1 meters. That's where, that's the distance at which the cyclist overtakes the jogger, okay? Also, another really interesting point about this is what is the velocity of the cyclist when they overtake the jogger? Well, if we think about that, the final velocity of the cyclist here, they're accelerating, and their acceleration is uh, 0.6 meters per second squared. If we multiply that by 7.3, seconds, uh, this was meters per second squared, we're going to end up getting, turns out to be 4.4 uh, meters per second, which interestingly is actually double the speed of the jogger, okay, at that point there. A really good question as an extension of this problem would be what would happen if, let's say, we have the, the cyclist, or sorry, let's say the jogger is traveling in this direction, right? And um, I don't know if I did that right. There, okay. Anyways bad looking jogger but anyways um, and the cyclist is let's say 10 meters behind the jogger so in other words the jogger passes the cyclist by 10 meters and then the cyclist starts to chase to give chase to the jogger what would this look like well in terms of the graph now the initial position of the jogger would be 10 his velocity would still be the same it would still be a straight line okay actually let's change that the slope of that line there because uh, make it easy to see okay so that's that's still a straight line but on the other hand the bicyclist starts from position zero 
But now, they also start from initial velocity zero, so we're going to have a horizontal slope here. But as you can see now, it's going to take a longer time to catch the cyclist because the jogger has a 10 meter head start. And so if we were to solve this problem, we could say, yeah, df equals df uh, jogger and cyclist. The cyclist would remain the same. It'd be 1 half at squared. But on this side, instead of just having vt, we'd have vt plus di. And that di now would be 10. So that's a little bit of a variation on that problem. Here we have another question where we have a capsule that accelerates to 444 uh, meters per second in 1.8 seconds and then it slows down back to rest in 2.15 seconds. Question is what acceleration does the person inside the capsule experience? So let's see if we can draw a little picture here. So here is the here is the um, speed up and here is the slow down. Our initial velocity here is zero and our, our intermediate velocity here is four, four, four. And then our velocity here again is zero. Um, we also know that this time is 1.8 seconds and the time to slow down is 2.15 seconds. So we can calculate the acceleration for the first part uh, by you know using our equation here we'll solve for a and it's the definition right of acceleration and we're gonna say 444 minus 0 divided by 1.8 and we're gonna get 200 and 46.7 meters per second squared. Now in terms of in terms of how that compares to uh, g which is the acceleration due to gravity all we need to do is we need to go 246.7 divided by 9.8 and if we do that we'll get approximately 25 G's. So 25 times the acceleration of gravity. Um, and for the second part, for this part, let's solve that. It's the same, it's the same equation, okay? Acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. But in this case, our final velocity here is zero. And our initial velocity is 444. And so if we do that, and, and the time in this case is different too. It's 2.15. we end up with 206.5 meters per second squared. And if we divide that by 9.8, we're going to get approximately 21 g's. So 
That was an easy question. Let's try another one. By the way, just out of uh, just to, just to let you guys know, it, in terms of um, let's say if we talk about fighter pilots experiencing G's, um, when an airplane is flying and they're you know traveling in a uh, radius, or if, if if this is an airplane and they and they're going to try and make a turn, a quick turn, let's say in a dogfight to get behind another plane, the pilot is going to be experiencing uh, centripetal acceleration, which is something we'll learn about later, but the acceleration that the pilot experiences can actually cause the pilot to black out, and that's called G-lock, but usually somewhere around after after about five G's uh, of sustained uh, acceleration the a pilot may black out I think some pi some people depending on how fit they are in their physiological uh, attributes namely short and strong is better than uh, tall and thin and the reason for that is because blood, if it leaves your brain when you're sitting in the pilot seat, you'll black out. Another thing that they have in those seats is they have air bladders uh, in their pants called the G-suit and the plane will actually pump air into your pant legs to squeeze your legs in, the, in, in and, and by doing so it helps you to keep more of your blood in your upper extremities around your head. Um, but some pilots can even withstand up to up to nine G's, not for extended periods of time, but for a short period of time. After that, I think it's hard to uh, it's hard to stay conscious uh, with a sustained acceleration of more than nine G's. Oh, okay. Big, big, uh, something I missed here. Let's change colors. This is a negative acceleration. Notice that this is 0 minus 444, four, four, which gives me a negative numerator. So this is a deceleration, uh, not an acceleration. So therefore, my acceleration is going to be negative. So I forgot to put that negative in. So a bus is going 90 kilometers per hour on the road and sees a frozen deer in its headlights. You know, when deer see a uh, headlights, they kind of freeze. On the road, 40 meters away. Now, the bus driver is human. So by the time their brain processes that, okay, okay there's a deer on the road, what should I do? Yes, press the brakes as quickly as possible. The brain said, sends the signal to the muscles of the leg to lift the foot and depress the brake pedal. And by the, pi by the time the brake pedal is depressed, it takes 0.75 seconds. So three quarters of a second to react, to press the brake pedal. The question now is, will the bus hit the deer if the maximum deceleration is or maximum acceleration of the bus is negative 10 meters per second. Now this question is actually, I'll, I'll give you a chance to, to solve it first. So you can, if you like, you can pause the video here. So this question is a two-part question. And the two parts to this question are, The first part is constant velocity. And the second part is acceleration. Okay, specifically the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. The first part, the constant velocity is 90 
kilometers per hour. This total distance from here to here is, well, actually, we're not sure how much it is, but we know that if this bus takes more than 40 meters to stop, it's going to hit the deer. Okay. So what we need to do first of all is we need to figure out what is the delta D for the constant um, velocity section and then what's the delta D for the acceleration section. So really this is quite easy for the constant velocity part, all we need to say is delta D is equal to V times T. So we can calculate this. We have to convert 90 kilometers per hour into meters per second. And we know that kilometer per hour is the bigger number versus meters per second. Therefore, since kilometer per hour is bigger, meter per second is smaller so we would have to divide 90 by 3.6, which is our conversion factor. That's going to give us our velocity. Um, and we know how long this takes. This reaction time is 0.75 seconds. And so this is going to give us 18.75 meters. Now that's almost half of the 40 meters that, that we are required to stop in. But the second part, the second delta D, is a little bit more complicated because we don't have a time for this. There, there is no time. But what we do have is we have an initial velocity which is here because the, the bus is still going 90 kilometers per hour before, it, before the, the brakes start taking effect. We also know that the final velocity must be zero. So therefore, in order to calculate delta D, which is what we want, let's use this equation. And let's solve for delta D. So we would get V final squared minus V initial squared divided by 2A. Now if we plug in our values, we get 0 squared minus initial velocity is 90 divided by uh, 3.6 squared divided by 2 times a. And a is negative 10. And when we do this, we're going to get a distance of, so 31.25 meters. Now, since I know the distance the bus travels before slowing down, and then the distance the bus travels after it starts to apply the brakes, and when I add them up, I end up with 50 meters. That means there isn't, so that means it's going to take this bus 50 meters to stop. So obviously, the 40 meters that, um, that was, that we have to stop is insufficient and so therefore the bus will hit the deer. And that's the end of this question along with the poor deer.